Good morning, everyone. And welcome to First United Methodist Church. I'm Blake Busick, one of the pastors here, and it's great to greet you and to welcome you to our celebration today. It's a very special Sunday today. Uh, the message and scripture is going to be presented by our chancel choir and friends, and uh, a great day to proclaim the, the Easter message as we go along in this Easter season. Also, we have Jenny Jones, who's, who's accompanying us today, a very special <laughs> player as well. So we thank you, Jenny, for being here. We really, really appreciate that. Before we get started, however, I want to make a couple of announcements. Hopefully you've had a chance to look at those announcements in your bulletin or on the screen as you have gathered for worship. I want to make a couple of highlights, though, just to be sure. A couple things coming up this week. Other things are mentioning coming up a little bit later. But this Tuesday night, the um, Living the Questions small group uh, study begins. That's this Tuesday at 7 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. So if you are interested in that, uh, please know it begins uh, this week. Also, in the right-hand corner of your bulletin, there's a little box there about the uh, our new pictorial directory. We want you <laughs> in that directory. And so today and next week and the following week, there's a time to sign up for a time to have your picture taken. By We're going to work with LifeTouch uh, this year. And uh, the, the dates are in the middle of, of May and then in June. But we really want uh, all of you to sign up to do that. It's great to have everybody's picture in the pictorial directory. It helps us to put names and faces. You know, we're spread out among so many services. You see somebody's face, you say, I think I know that person. Pictorial directory is a great way to go back home and look at it. If you get your picture taken, you're going to get a, a, a directory yourself, and uh, there's no cost to you to have your picture taken. It's a great benefit to us. There'll be a chance for you to buy pictures beyond that if you want to, but there's no obligation to do so. So please uh, sign up and get your picture taken for our new uh, directory. I'm not even in the old one. We need a new one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is the day, another day, that the Lord has made. A day to rejoice, a day to be glad in it, a day to celebrate the goodness of God, a day to be open, fresh and new to the, the good news of God's presence and grace to us through Jesus Christ. Let's open ourselves to worship God in spirit and in truth today. I invite you to stand as we begin our service together today and, and sing a, a great Easter hymn. It's on the screen. It's Thine Be the Glory. It's number 308. You want to follow along in your hymn.
Gracious and loving God, it is a privilege to gather together to worship today with familiar faces and also with some new, new people that we have been uh, great, grateful to share this space with this morning. We ask that you would be with us. We ask that you might enable us to open our hearts and minds to, to your word, your, your good news that comes to us through word and through song. We are open to you. We are yours. We are your people. And we're here to worship you, to bless you, to praise you, and to be instruments of your grace and love in this world. Inspire our time of worship together. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to ask the children to come forward, if you're those kids that are around, and uh, some of them may already head it off already. see you. Looking sharp. You guys all have a nice Easter last last week. Last week was a was Easter, right? And today is one week later. Yeah. I want you to think of uh, somebody who's really important in your life. Somebody who's really important. Who are some of the important people in your life? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus is an important person. Absolutely. Anybody else in your life is important? Yes. Parents. Your parents? Why are they important? That's a hard question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They take care of you. Uh, you wouldn't be here without your parents, right? That's, a, that's an important one, too. Anybody else important in your life? Lots of important people that help us to make our life what it is today. Yeah. Your brother. So you have brothers. So you have brothers and sisters and, and, and family members are really important. But I want to talk a minute about what you said, that Jesus is an important per person in our life as well. In fact, during Easter and during this time of, of the year, we talk about how Jesus maybe is one of the most, if not the most important person in our life because of not only that he have his death, because he, we talk about him rising from the dead as well, right? Easter, we celebrate his resurrection, his coming back to, to life. And do you know why we worship on Sunday and not on Saturday or Friday or any other day of the week? Do you have any idea? Do you know why we do that? Do you ever wonder, why do we come to church on Sunday? Why don't we come to church on Saturday and worship on Saturday or worship on Friday or something like that? Do you ever wonder that? It so wasn't the day he was, well, I don't know when, what day he was born. No, we, we celebrate his birth the 25th of, of December, right? But we really don't know exactly the day, if that was a Sunday or what day even that was. Do you have an idea? So, 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 so when God created the world, God, the seventh day, God rested. But do you know that what, what day the seventh day is? It's actually, it's actually Saturday. Hmm. Mystery. Why do we worship on Sunday? The reason is because of the most important person. Because Jesus rose on Sunday. So it wasn't his birth, it was his resurrection. And so we celebrate the resurrection every Sunday in a sense. And all that that means for us and the hope that, that God gives to us. So of all the important people in our lives, certainly Jesus is... One of the most important, if not the most important. And so we worship him every Sunday and, and, and do that. So let's, let's have prayer together. We'll send you on your way. God, thank you for Jesus. Now important he is in our life. He gives us hope and life and expresses your love. We devote our lives to him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Good to see all of you this morning.
anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself through Christ's promise of forgiveness of sin. This is the power of the cross. God's people had long awaited the coming of Christ. Suffering under the oppressive Roman regime, they found hope in the words of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thinking he would establish an earthly kingdom where they would be free from Roman oppression, they prepared to welcome their new king into Jerusalem. A very large crowd spread cloaks and branches on the road as Jesus entered the city. Surrounding him, they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king, the son of David. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes.
Cheers faded quickly as the events of the following week began to unfold. Knowing the end was near, Jesus prepared for a final meal with his disciples. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took a cup of wine and said, this is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. When you drink this, remember me. The closeness of that last meal with his disciples was short-lived. That very night, Judas took action to betray Jesus. Peter, one of his most loyal friends, denied him not once, but three times, as religious leaders in Jerusalem provoked the government officials to have Jesus arrested. Knowing what lay ahead for him, Jesus withdrew to an olive grove to pray. Abba, Father, he cried out, for you everything is possible. 
Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine.
The stillness of the night was shattered as soldiers came to arrest Jesus, whom Judas betrayed with a kiss. Jesus was brought before the Roman governor Pilate to stand trial. Pressured by angry crowds who had been incited by the chief priests, Pilate condemned Jesus to death by crucifixion. Two criminals were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. People passing by mocked him, shouting, You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. If you are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The religious leaders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. He said, I'm the Son of God, so let God rescue him. If he will come down from the cross right now, we will believe in him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Then the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Then he breathed his last.
Many women who had come to care for Jesus were watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and Mary the mother of Jesus. What anguish Mary must have felt as she watched the lifeless body of her son be lifted from the cross. Late on Friday afternoon, the day of preparation for the Sabbath, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea buried the body of Jesus. The women from Galilee followed them to the tomb. Then they went home and prepared spices and ointments to embalm him.
Early on Sunday morning, the women returned to the tomb with the spices. When they arrived, they found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. The men asked them, why are you looking among the dead? For someone who is alive, he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Remembering that Jesus had said this, the women rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. Hail the day that sees him rise. Ah, breathtakingly beautiful.
Thank you, Mark Hayes, Doug, and choir. Now, as we transition to bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of Lord, let's bow our heads and pray for others. Heavenly host, we pray for our sisters and brothers on Karen Corner, for the spirit of God to move around and within them. We thank you for their answered prayers. When you rescue them from the pain of surgery, undiagnosed infections, chronic illness, falls, injury, chemo, radiation. You gave them recovery and new life. You've brought them back to life. When you find them work, nurse them back from failed relationships and broken hearts. You lead them to restored faith and hope once again. We pray for decision-making by our leaders and we remind them that lives are shaped and reshaped by their choices. We ask for divine guidance, cooler minds, and just results. We pray for our church and its future. Stephen ministers and angels angels on call and parish visitors and youth and children's ministry and all of our missions, Vim. We pray that their work is inspired and filled with the exuberance of a job well done. God of all grace and goodness, we praise you for looking after us and caring for our needs, we, your children. We thank you for your love and compassion. Each day is a blessing. We offer you our lives and these gifts in your name. Amen.
What a wonderful proclamation of the good news and wonderful offertory as well, Jenny. Thank you very much. Uh, the choir is off now to uh, Stony Point. It's not that they didn't like you, it's just that they had something <laughs> to share at, uh, at that service as well. Let us give thanks. Gracious God, for indeed the power of the cross, we give you thanks and praise for, for Christ's passion, for our redemption, for the hope that you've instilled in our lives and you bless us with to this day. We thank you for Jesus. We devote our lives to him. And it's in his name that we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing a great uh, hymn of faith together. It's number 310 in your hymnals on the screen. He lives. <laughs> to invite you to the fellowship hall for a time of refreshments and signing up for your pictures, greeting old friends and meeting new ones. Go now in peace. Go with God. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.